Trey Pipkins proved himself to be an All-American offensive lineman during a brilliant four-year career at Sioux Falls. Today he's trying to show that that can translate into the NFL. The 6'7 USF alum was at the NFL Draft Combine in Indianapolis today working out as one of the top offensive line prospects in the country. His highlight of the day was a 33.5 inch vertical jump, second best among the 57 offensive linemen testing today, and he also had one of the top broad jumps. The first Cougar to ever participate in the Combine, Pipkins is most likely to be a mid to late round prospect during the draft from April 25th through the 27th. SDSU cornerback Jordan Brown works out on Monday. The NSIC basketball tournament shifts to the Sanford Pentagon tomorrow for quarterfinal play with a bevy of local teams still alive. Perhaps the most intriguing matchup of the weekend comes at high noon on Sunday when the top seeded Northern State men face Sioux Falls. At 23 and 6 and third in the Central Region rankings, the defending national runner up Wolves are locked into a return to the NCAA tournament and the presumptive favorite to win a second straight NSIC tournament. For the 19 and 10 Cougars, the door has opened a bit for them thanks to some upsets to get in the potentially central region field. But they'll have to have a, at minimum a victory over the Wolves to have any hope of that. Something they feel like they can do thanks to the presence and experience of two first team all conference players and Trayvon Evans and Drew Giebert. Yeah, if, if me and Drew are both rolling, I know for a fact that it's going to be real hard for a team to come in and beat us if me and Drew are both rolling. But I mean, it's not, it does, it's not even like we really care about that, to be honest. We just try to win. So, but if we're both rolling, then sorry, I feel bad for the other team, to be honest. Also on Sunday at 5.30, a battle of cinder fellas as Southwest Minnesota State faces Bemidji State. The fifth-seeded Mustangs upset fourth-seeded Moorhead on Wednesday, while eighth-seeded Bemidji State upended top Southern seed Mankato. SMSU will lean on the conference's top scorer, that guy Ryan Brueggemann, to try and keep their season alive. He's just fun to be around just because of how competitive he is. Every day he competes. Uh, he brings out the best in others and himself. He's a guy that, you know, when he's gone, sometimes you don't realize how important those types of guys are until they're gone. But right now, as we have them, we're trying to, to again, build and keep going and, and uh, get the most out of this team as we can. The women's side of the tournament seems to be up for grabs, and the hottest team going in are the Sioux Falls Cougars. The preseason favorite to win the NSIC struggled early in the year, losing their only senior to a season-ending injury. They've hit stride over the last month, though, taking a nine-game win streak into tomorrow's quarterfinal with Wayne State. We have typically played some of, our, some of our best basketball late, you know, and I would hope that if you interviewed other coaches in our league, I would hope they would say that we're also a team that they probably wouldn't be overly excited about playing, and I think that's constantly in every day proving to get a little bit better. Here's the schedule for the local team. Sioux Falls and Wayne State women tip it off at 2.30 tomorrow. Augustana faces Duluth at 8 o'clock. Men take over on Sunday. USF and Northern at noon. SMSU at 5.30. The semifinals are all on Monday and the championships on Tuesday. Tomorrow is also the final day of regular season play in the Summit League with both the South Dakota State men and women needing a victory to secure a regular season conference championship and the top seed in next week's Summit League tournament. By virtue of Omaha's loss at Oral Roberts last night, the Jackrabbit men can clinch the title tomorrow if they beat Western Illinois at 415. That's the same scenario for the Jackrabbit women who start the doubleheader with the Leathernecks at 2. If SDSU loses, the door opens for the Coyote women to claim the conference title and top seed. They tip off a doubleheader at 1 against UND. USD men follow that at 330. If they beat UND, they'll be the sixth seed next week. We'll have a lot of playoff prep basketball. I'll say that three times fast tonight at 10 o'clock. We're back in one moment. <laughs> 